exact moment when they receive the judge's sentence. Life without parole as to count four for the offense of attempted murder by a mandatory consecutive underlying offenses. All those counts are consecutive to each other. As well. that they know they will spend many years in prison, or will even be sentenced to death, makes them despair and lose control. <coughs> However, physical imprisonment is not the worst. There are those who manage to have their sentences reduced, or even receive parole for good behavior, if they have good lawyers. The worst prison is the eternal one. If a person becomes distressed by having to spend 30 years in prison, could you imagine what it means to be condemned for all eternity? Tormented without rest for 50, 100, 500, 1000 years? No, for all eternity. Undoubtedly, their desperation will be much greater. Many souls are being condemned to hell daily for rejecting the word of God and its salvation. Many say, stay tied to the church, to the Bible, having to do everything right. I prefer to be free, to do whatever I want. However, this false sense of freedom can lead to the eternal condemnation of your soul. Many think that they are free, when in fact they are tied to their sins and the emptiness within them. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Today, we are mocked. We are the laughing stock because of our surrender and obedience. But tomorrow, we will rejoice with the true and eternal freedom that we will encounter in heaven. This choice can only be made in life, because after death, there is nothing else to be done. Once in hell, a person is already condemned. It is whilst here that each one chooses their future, be it eternal life or eternal prison. Do not seek salvation for fear of going to hell. Desire it for what awaits those who love God and obey His word. Now, stop and think. If you knew that you would be imprisoned for all eternity, what would you be willing to do to be free from this condemnation? It's Khalid Mitchell, and welcome to another segment of Real Talk Ministries. All is wonderful to see you guys tune in to another wonderful Bible study. What I got for you guys tonight. The subject matter tonight will be on it. Well, basically, hell is real. I'm not even gonna ask the question if hell is real because i don't want to waste your time and even my time tonight pertaining to something that those that have been exposed to the truth should be already aware of but the the enemy is truly truly i should say trying his best to make himself appear as if he does not exist and the place where the wicked go when they die if they are not saved by the Lord and say our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, where they will be their final destination. So, without even going any further, hell is a real destination, and tonight's study is going to give you guys a little description 
about this particular place. And by the grace of God, if the opportunity comes arise, I will do a study also on heaven is real. Because our life upon this earth is temporal. So everything that we strive for, especially those that are in the Lord, our desire should be to work out everything that we do is to prepare ourselves to be with the Lord for all eternity. If you have not come to know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior for yourself, I pray that through this study that something touches your heart and pricks your heart and conveys you to just give your life and surrender even as this very moment right now unto God. It is not nothing that you will be missing out in this world. You do not have to entertain the lights of this, this world and somehow come back to the truth or vice versa. Like without further ado, as I said it earlier before, the study tonight will be on hell is real. And for whatever reason, those that are not familiar with this particular topic. So I'll just start it off with a question. What is hell? Now, the biblical definition of hell is a place of God's final retributive punishment for the wicked. Now, the Old Testament outlines the framework while the New Testament elaborates on it. As I stated before, it is a place of God's final retributive punishment for the wicked. Never was intended for us humankind, but it was intended for the angels that fall and that came against God. Nevertheless, if we do not serve God, if we do not surrender unto God, if we do not, um, I should say, be born again of the water and of the spirit and live a life unto holiness, representing the one true living God, then this unfortunate will be, will be your destination. Now, what I want to break it up because I'm going to uh, go from the point of view as of my audience that is not familiar with it and those that are familiar with this particular subject, hopefully it is a refresher for you. Now, as I stated earlier, hell is a real location. It's not located in a natural realm, but in the spiritual realm. The Lord showed me a very long time ago that the natural realm, even though it's tangible, we can see it, we can smell, we can taste, we can touch, is really not, per se, how can I say this, reality. The true reality is where we go when we die, which is the spiritual realm. God is a spirit and he dwells in such a realm. He also dwells in us, but he is not of flesh. He is a spirit. We are spiritual beings living in a vessel. For when we die, our body will go back unto the dust of which we came from. It does not take rocket science to realize that we are not going to live forever. We have come to learn very quickly that death comes to us all. It does not matter your color. It does not matter your status. It does not matter the whatever you hold great in this life. That is going to knock on each and every one of our door. And if you are in the Lord, the absence of the body is to be in the presence. From the Hebrew word meaning the first death. And it mentions this also in the Old Testament, which just means in, it mentions to the grave. This is located in the book of Psalms, chapter 16, verse 10. Praise the Lord. Also, another word that is used in reference unto hell is Gehana. Jesus mentioned this. This is also a Hebrew word that is for hell. It is related to the valley of Hinram. I pronounce that correctly and also uh, it is also another reference word for it is called Gehinnom which is a place aboard of the damned 
Praise the Lord. Another reference is as well too is the bottomless pit. It refers to the place where angels and sinners are reserved in the chains of darkness for judgment. Now, it mentions many other different names for hell, but as like any other individual or location that is mentioned in the Holy Scriptures, it all boils down to the same thing. Now, what I was asking prior before when I had mentioned about where is hell located, scriptures also reference this. Now, for whatever reason, there is controversy in this area, but it was a very wise pastor that also told me or taught me to always keep the word of God to simplicity. We do not want to make it so complicated that the average person may not be able to receive what I'm trying to convey tonight. Now, hell is located, or basically I should say, Scripture teaches that it is in the lower parts of the earth. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9, it states, He that ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? This is referring to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, when he died, which was the first death, in he went to Sheol, which is the grave. After, when he was in the grave, in three days, where he was in the lower parts of the earth, which was hell. Now, I don't want to go too much in depth, but while he was there, he took those that died prior before the saints and took them out of the gates of hell. And after the three days, I should say, if it's not after when he walked the earth, within that reference time frame, I'm not too sure. Because I'm not too sure about something, I'll just indicate that. But nevertheless, he did remove the saints that died prior before his coming. Now, it also mentions that when his time when he walked amongst the earth was over he also ascended into heaven because when he ascended into heaven his disciples apostles were there also looking up into heaven at that time which is when an angel asked them the question paraphrasing why brethren are you looking ye up to heaven the same god or same jesus will come back again in like manner Praise the Lord. Now, and I'm kind of going a little fast with this because I just want to cut, like I said, catch the main parts. So basically, we have touched on what is hell, the different names that are mentioned in the scriptures about hell, where it is located. And now we want to touch on, well, who goes to hell? Now, I want to just stick with what the scripture says pertaining to those that may unfortunately go to hell. The Lord desires that none shall perish and that all shall be saved. But he has given us all free will. So therefore, is no really guarantee because there's a wide and broad road unto destruction, but very narrow is the road unto glory so i'm praying that you guys make that decision and even when you make that decision that you stay on that road sometimes that road may get a little rocky sometimes that road may be a little discomfort sometimes that road may not seem like it's never ending but like anything in life once you start a destination once you start that journey i should say your desire is to get to that destination at some point in our walk with God, we are going to get where our hope is waiting for us. It's to be with the Lord for all eternity. This is the hope that I hold on with all their life. And this is a hope that my brethren as well hold on to. For those, like I said earlier before, that do not know the Lord, that are not saved, I pray that throughout the study tonight at some point that something convicts you something touches your heart something leads you to say that you are tired of the lifestyle that you have been living and that you truly 
desire to turn away, repent of your sins. Let God, Christ, come into you. Let you be born again of the, the Spirit and also of the water. Nevertheless, let us continue. Now, as I asked the question before, who goes to hell? Hallelujah. It states here in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, but the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, adulterers, or I say that, adulterers, and all liars. Praise the Lord. Second, all these individuals and such shall have their part in the lake, which burn it with fire and brimstone, which is the second debt. As I mentioned, the first debt is the one when we go back into the earth and the dust of which we came from. The second debt will be upon judgment day when that book is opened up and i pray to god that those that are listening in tonight and even myself that my name is not blotted out that when they open that book of life that they may see my name that they may see your name and that also you may have that entry in because if your name is not written in there and i will show you guys the scripture pertaining to that if your name is not written in there is into the lake of fire that you shall be cast into hallelujah and i said also i should say scripture teaches that and that's what i mentioned earlier before that whoever's name is not written in the book of life. And that's meant that is mentioned in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 15. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, also, the other question is: well, what would hell be like? I pray that none of us are able to find out or never should find that out for ourselves. Nevertheless, the Holy Scriptures touches on this as well. Now, if anything, we should know that hell is going to be the complete contrary or the opposite of what heaven is. Now, it was interesting. I came across this scripture as well in the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verse 4. And it states that, and this is referencing to what it would be like in heaven. But remember, hell is all is, is going to be the complete opposite of what heaven is going to be. So therefore, it mentions in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 4, God shall wipe away all our tears. Now, this is in heaven because there will be no more tears. There will be no more reason to suffer. For all of those things will be done away. Nevertheless, in hell, it will be tears of pain, torment, and regret for all eternity. The same memory that you have right now is the same memory that you will go into where in, in, in not only in the grave, but also into hell. The pain that you will feel will be an everlasting pain. It will not quench. There is no way out and there is no hope. So therefore, in heaven, all our tears will be wiped away because all those things will be done away with. In hell, it will be increased. There will be nothing but torment, pain, and also on top of it, regret. Hallelujah. And they also shall be no more debt in heaven. Remember, the scripture teaches us that the wages of sin is debt. In heaven, there will be no more debt. But unfortunately, in hell, those that are condemned will pray that debt will make, will come, but there will be no way out. A lot of us or those 
that at some point in their life had felt suicidal is because of whatever the pain and suffering that you may have temporarily been going through, even if it was something that you have been facing all your life. Everything in this life is temporal. Do not sacrifice or give up everything for something that is not everlasting. I know in the moment and in the situation is easier said than done. This is why we must always have our mind upon God. This is why our mind must be renewed upon the scripture. This is why our faith may not be shaken by the cares and the wiles of this life. Praise the Lord. Now, just to conclude with everything, in heaven there will be no more tears. Tears will be wiped away. There will be no more pain. There will be no more sorrow. And it's complete opposite when it comes to hell. There will be an increase in all sorrow. There will be everlasting pain, torment, regret, and such. Now, also, to continue in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 50, it also states, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth i don't know if any of you ever been burnt before either by electricity or by fire or anybody that has been in a fire and has had severe burns fire that cannot be quenched and a pain that does not have no end. Some may say, well, why would a wicked God send us to such a place? God gave us free will. And with this free will, I urge you to give it back unto God. Because his will for your life and my life is greater than anything that we could ever aspire for ourselves. Our righteousness, our filthy rags. There's nothing good in us. We are only sinners saved by grace. I have humbled myself to this truth. And by humbling myself to this truth, in due time, God will exalt me to be used in his way, shape, or form that he may be lifted up and not myself. I make these efforts and sacrifices and time not because I don't have anything else to do, because I truly love whomever that is looking and listening on to this. And my desire is truly that you may give your life because it is a reality that I am talking about. There's nothing better or sweeter than having a relationship with God, with Jesus. There's nothing sweeter to see your life transformed before your eyes. There's nothing sweeter than being a blessing and not a curse unto others. There's nothing sweeter than having a purpose when there was no purpose. And I could just go on and on and on. The love of God is not compared to anything that this world can offer. The love of God cannot be compared to the love that my wife gives me, the love of my son, the love of my parents, friends. There's nothing and no one on this earth that can compare to the love that Christ shares unto me. What little is it for me to make that sacrifice and give back unto others just as well because I need Jesus just as everybody else needs Jesus. And, you know, the quicker you come to terms with this, the better you will see your life transform for for what you could not even foresee because his desire is great things for our life but nevertheless sticking with this study and also as i was mentioning before about who goes to hell or i should say what is hell like but in the book of revelation chapter 20 verse 10 also states and the devil who deceived them was thrown in the lake of fire and brimstone where the best the beast and the false prophet are 
excuse me, are also. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. The scriptures is absolute truth. And when they mention that the torment goes on day and night, night and day, without without being quenched do not try to convince yourself in your mind and make a god in your mind to say well the god that i serve will never create or have a place such as this you have an antichrist spirit and you are of the devil why because you go against what is written only stick and trust to what is written do not even believe the words that i say search the scriptures for yourself Search them diligently. Wait upon the Lord that he may be able to answer your prayers. Because you only have one life. You have a warning. And the warning God used men of God such as myself to send out that warning. That warning, I am not above what is written. You are not above what is written. We all are subjected to the word of God be that you are a believer or that if you are a lover of sin it does not matter the day of judgment will come and as i stated before if your name god forbid is not written in that book of life all debates and all questions and all these things will be cast aside because guess what when that fire hits you it reality kicks in real quick hallelujah but my will as is as God's will that anyone listening in tonight, my desire is for you not to perish. Obviously, it does not matter if you are enemy or not. I have no enemies. I hold nothing and I pray I have nothing in my heart against anyone. It's a waste of my energy because I, when I come before the presence of God, I have to make sure that my heart is right before him. So also, if I ask in him to forgive me, I must be willing to also forgive others. This is just how it goes, and it's the will of God to do it as such. Now, just to, I shall share, well, almost in conclusion, let me just share one more scripture with you guys, as I believe is in the, book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 41 then he will also say to those on his left or this side depart from me a cursed one into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devils and his angels I know some of us who are familiar with the scripture have heard this before and if you have not it was never created for us. But nevertheless, if you choose to live a life of sin and do not and abstain from your Savior, the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then this place will unfortunately be your final destination. How do you avoid going to this place? Choose at this very moment, choose at this very time that Lord reveal yourself to me pray unto him there's really nothing to lose other than your soul itself but do not serve god for in fear but truly serve him allow him to reveal himself to you that you may have a true relationship with him, a true encounter because what i've learned over the years is that when a man or a woman or whoever have a real encounter with jesus christ it changes everything. It changes everything that you've heard from other people, what you've read. It just becomes a reality. Okay? Choose at this moment that, Lord, I want you to fill me with your spirit. A lot of things may be fearful. A lot of things you may question because it's a battle in your mind. Pray that God brings your thoughts under subjection because for you to be saved is according to what is written in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38 that you must first repent turn away from your sins and cry out unto Jesus repent be baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins that it may be removed that you may receive his Holy Spirit with the evidence there's an evidence and a sign of speaking in tongues language 
heavenly language. This is not just uh, something that is a religion. This is not something that man made up. When God fills an individual, there is a sign. But there is a there is an earthly language. There is a heavenly language, and there is also a demonic language. So, without further ado, I just want to just thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Um, I guess what I would like right now, or not that I guess the Lord is just desiring for me to pray tonight, that this word that I share with you guys, because it could go much more in depth, but I'm just praying tonight, um, right now, that it really will just take it and make and take that leap of faith. I'm praying that when it does happen for you, that God gets the glory and that I pray nothing but blessings upon your life and your family. Father, oh Lord God, I just thank you for this opportunity always to be used by you, to be a blessing and no longer a curse unto others. Father, oh Lord God, the body may be weary, but the spirit is always willing. Father, oh Lord, I pray that your love may fall upon the individual that is looking upon tonight, O oh Lord God. For whatever reason that they may have tuned in tonight, O oh Lord God, Father, let this be the moment that they cry on to you. Let this be the moment that they put down that alcohol, put down that drug. Father, O oh Lord God, forgive that person. Let everything go. All the insecurities and all the, the questions and the debates and the confusion, Father, O oh Lord, I come against all those things and principalities in the name of Jesus Christ. Reveal your spirit unto them, O oh Lord God, Father, that this place that we, I'm re referring to tonight will not be theirs or my final destination, but that we, we may be with you for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys once again. As always, my name is Khalid Mitchell, and this is Real Talk Ministries. Love you guys. God bless.